<laughs> How did your 45 angles go? 45 degree angles go? You got something that looks like that? You know, as you're going. I'd like to move on if you didn't get a chance to do that. Make sure you do, but I would like to move on. Um, maybe just a... Uh, you know, as you're getting going, I'll just... Uh, to refresh this memory. So we I just wanted to think about like rotating P from think about what angles we could get without a protractor. And with a uh, straight line tool we could go uh, okay. We could definitely get like a 180 that point, 180, I guess that's calling it prime. I don't, we're going to have a lot of primes here. We got the uh, 90 degrees by doing a perpendicular bisector to to P, P prime. To do a perpendicular bisector, you got to move the compass a little past the center because I need to make two marks. Uh, either above or below the midpoint. And the nice thing is you can kind of do both at the same time by just keeping the compass where it is. You could change the compass size, but you, you don't want to change it when you bring it over here. I need it to be the same size because I want to find points that are the same distance from P and P prime. So kind of nice if I just don't change it at all, and that in this scenario gives me oops, gives me uh, two. Uh, not gonna work with me. That's not work. Gives me two other angles, namely like 90 degrees and 270. I think we said. Okay. So how to go making your angle copy? Uh, sorry, not angle copy, um, angle bisector. So I got a 90 degree rotation. If I mark points that are equidistant from P, e, the same distance from C, uh, then from there, I'm marking. I'm marking a point in the middle that's the same distance from those. Uh, let's see, that was, ooh, just barely. Okay, that point is the same distance from the points I marked. They're the same distance from C. So that point is on the angle bisector. So if I got out my straight line tool, that cuts it in two, and there would be 45 degrees. That's all I was, I was hoping you could do that, because we could, of course, keep going and get other angles if we kept bisecting, which is really what we did with the 180, right? Okay. Want to look at rotations of 90. 180, 270, will you join me on exploration three, rotation activity one. That's confusing a little bit, maybe.
So it's going to look down here. We're moving ABC as you like. Sticking with the Desmos, I next time probably use GeoGebra. Desmos all right, but okay. Um, what I'd like you to do is this transformation. What is this saying? Anybody read it? Maybe on your document, Dylan. I'm on rotations, not reflection. Mindy. Yeah, and then it says rotate the triangle. Yeah. Transformation can be represented as a rotation 90 degrees of <coughs> AB, triangle ABC goes triangle A1010. Nice. Notice that it's implied that it goes counterclockwise. 90 degrees clockwise would either be represented as 270 degrees or negative 90 degrees. Awesome. Thanks. So there it is. No, R90 degrees O for rotation 90 degrees about the origin so that's what we're going to do so if you go over here to transform i've already got it kind of set up for you all you got to do is select the object you want to rotate i'm going to select the vertices and the edges and i've already marked d here for my uh, center of rotation and all i got to do is apply boom there it is 90 degree rotation um back over here you can oh did i move that okay that's good okay so it will it will change if you if you can change it but you know maybe try not to you can add length measurements hmm is this a right right triangle uh, two and three and three point six one is that a right angle you can measure angles of course too by like marking the vertices ah there's a right angle um, you could label the points it's the one thing I wish it did for you um, what would this point be down here not E that's A prime. A apostrophe for A prime. That right angle there, that's B prime, not E. If you don't label the vertices, that's all right. But hopefully you know which one's C prime and which one's D prime. And you could, of course, um, you could measure the angles. And that would kind of confirm for you, maybe. So hopefully you're seeing angles are congruent, side lengths are congruent, boom. Also, let's look at the, over the coordinates, see if we can come up with a coordinate rule. For example, A is at 1, 3, goes to A prime, negative 3, 1. Hmm. How about B? B is at 4, 3. Where does it go? B prime over here in the second quadrant. X is negative. Negative 3, positive 4. We kind of looked at this a while back when we, when I was trying to prove that perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocal. Sound familiar? You bet say yes. Okay. What's going on here? What's C? Could you tell me C's coordinates? It starts at 4, 1. What's C prime? Without even looking at the image. What's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, nice. What did you see there, Christy? The 
the X and the Y are changing positions, and then also one of them going opposite. Yeah. Yeah, which has to do with our opposite, uh, opposite reciprocal slopes. So I'm looking for a rule to determine x, y. Is that how I set it up for you? Yeah, and this time I put an underline. You can delete that if you want or whatever. But yeah, we're just looking for, is this how I wrote it? R of 90 degrees O equals, or x, y. So I'm saying, yeah, then you put x, y. I'm saying, what's going on with x, y? The y and the x are switching. And if you think about starting in the first quadrant, I think that's most helpful. 90 degrees is going to take me to the second quadrant, right? What's going on in the second quadrant? I have negative positive, right? A little bit confusing, I think, because we're seeing that switch switcheroo thing happen. What about 180 degrees? Did we, are we familiar with that? So we can, uh, once again, if we can go back to transform, you can change this. Instead of 90, you can just type it in 180. Which one would be the origin? Just like Earth, oh, yeah. D, yeah, I had to mark that on there. Uh, yeah, so the origin's where the x and y axis cross, it's 0, 0. Yeah. So we can do it again. Oops. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's easier. Not the best program, but it's like moving it. It's annoying. Uh, Finn? If you like click and then drag the cursor over the shape, you'll select all of this. Ah, that's nice. Oh, also. <laughs> what the what? So, oh, yeah, hello, just like that. There there we go, thanks. <laughs> uh, also, you don't have to, because you already did it once, you can just type in 180, and there it is. And now we can look at what's going on with the coordinates there. 180, that's my jam. I mean, who doesn't love a good 180? With the method graph, you know what I'm saying? It's okay. Okay, anyway. One, three goes to A prime, negative one, negative three. You see why it's funky, right? B goes from four, three to B prime, negative four, negative three. See something already? What's going on? Maybe you already see that. What do you see? Um, Sawyer? What do you notice with the coordinates I just wrote down? 1, 3 goes to negative 1, negative 3. 4, 3 goes to negative 4, negative 3. Where do you think C goes? 4, 1 goes to... How'd you get that? Yeah, negative four, negative one. How'd you get that? They're exactly the same. Whoa, that's crazy. They're exactly the same, except negative. Yeah, nice. All right, so write that down. We'll get there. How about 270? Maybe a little bit trickier, but, but you know, not so much. First quadrant goes to the fourth quadrant. You could also type in negative 90. So uh, here we go again. A, what was it? <laughs> 1, 3 goes to A prime. 3, 1, not quite. One of them's negative, right? But we see a similar thing that Christian noticed earlier, namely that the coordinates are switching. Nice. And, again, for me, really helpful to think about 
uh, starting in the first quadrant, because where do I end up? The fourth quadrant, where it's positive on the x, negative on the y. It's a little bit confusing for what that rule is, maybe. D prime, what do we got? 4, 3. Sorry, D prime down here. 3, negative 4. You see something there, Carson? Nice. There we go. Boom. Got the coordinate rules. R180, about the origin of xy, goes to negative x, negative y. And then 90 degrees, this is a 90 degree rotation, just the other way. 270, about the origin of xy. Then it goes to yx, y opposite x. Is that what you said, Carson? What's the relationship between the coordinates of the vertices of ABC and ABC prime? Is that how I have that, right? Is it in there? Oh, dear. Well, they're kind of all different, right? Like 90 degrees, they switch. And one goes negative or opposite. Uh, for 180, it just goes opposite. Sorry if you can't read that. XY goes to another way, remember to write 180 or to write these coordinate rules is just to say x, y goes to opposite x, opposite y. But that is what 180 is. Opposite x, opposite y. What's going on with the side lengths and angle measures of the two triangles? They stay the same. They are, do we hear this word? Congruent. That's kind of the big idea here. You do a translation. The shape's going to stay congruent. A reflection. Side lengths and angles stay the same. The shapes are congruent. You do a rotation. The shapes are congruent. All right. Moving right along. Doing awesome. Questions, comments? Hold up. You got this? Yes. So for a transfer number f, is that basically just like the equation? Like we yeah. Yeah, that's kind of. I mean, maybe you notice something else. I don't know. I'm kind of trying to move things along. But, um, you know, it might be like. Uh, they move quadrants. Might be a good observation. Like depending on how many 90 degrees, when we're rotating about the origin, we're going to take the first quadrant to the second quadrant. 180 would take the first quadrant to the third quadrant. Of course, this would go, you know, 90 degrees from the third quadrant, it's going to take it to the fourth quadrant. So that would be a good observation too. All right. How about this? Rotating 180 degrees about negative one one. Not the origin. Challenge for you. Coordinate rule. And right, we'll see if we get to that. Will you open up the? Really, either. Either activity is fine. It's just got the a different uh, triangle, I believe. Looks like that. A's on the y-axis, and will you open up? A, B, C. Looks like that. I think. Okay, I like what Finn said. You can select the whole thing by...
clicking and dragging. Okay, if I want to, so I didn't define this transformation for you. So we are going to rotate it 180 degrees about this point here, negative 1, 1. So you got to put a point there first. So negative 1, 1. I'm actually just going to put a point here. Negative 1, 1. Boom. Welcome to label it if you want. You don't have to. Okay. So define transformation. We're going to rotate. <clears throat> Here's the center. And then it's saying uh, how many degrees. We're going to go 180 degrees. And <clears throat> we got to select the object. So thank you, Finn. You can just click and highlight the entire shape. That's what I'm going to rotate, 180 degrees, about that purple point. Apply. Boom. There it is. Um, one thing you can do that's nice here is <clears throat> you can uh, drag the center of rotation around and kind of see how it affects it differently. So notice what happens in the origin. We get what we might expect. A goes flips around and is now down here on the y-axis on the other side on the negatives. C was at 3 negative 3, and now it's at negative 3, 3. So look what happens when I move it here. I mean, you might see what's happening to that <clears throat> triangle as I move the center of rotation just diagonally up and to the left one. What kind of transformation am I doing here just moving that center of rotation? Translation, Translation yeah. So that's kind of a way to see this, is that this is a combination of a rotation with a translation. Let's look at the coordinates here, see if we can figure something out. So A goes from uh, 0 on the x, 3 on the y, to A prime. Remember what it would go to, it would go to 0, negative 3. But now where is it? negative 2, kind of weird, negative 1. Might be helpful to label that, of course, A prime. What about B prime? That's now down here, right? B starts at uh, 4, 5, and goes to B prime down here, negative 6. And we're down negative 3. So what's going on with the coordinate rule? Let's see if we can look at C. But first, remember what the rule was for 180? Negative x, negative y? Okay. So yeah, that still kind of happened, but as Maggie noted, kind of just as now it, it slides or translates to kind of its new position, right? So how can we modify this opposite x, opposite y, so that it fits what's actually going on here? So let's look at c also. It's at, okay, maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know how helpful it is when we have x is 3 and y is negative 3. And, you know, we'll see. C prime ends up... So it would go to negative 3, positive 3, right? But what does it actually do? It ends up at negative 5, uh, positive 5. Maybe that is helpful. So instead of negative 3, 3, we ended up at negative 5, 3. How can we adjust negative 3, 3 to get it to negative 5, 5? Maggie's thinking of the translation. How would we get from negative 3, negative 3, 3 to negative 5, 5? Left, 2, up to 
So left two would be subtract two, up two would be add two. Does that work here? Opposite of zero, zero. Then we gotta subtract two. Boom, yeah, it lands out negative two. Opposite of three would be negative three, and then we gotta add two. Negative three plus two, negative one. Yeah, nice. Okay, did that work for B? That maybe the real test. Opposite of four, negative four. Then we gotta subtract two. Negative four minus two is negative six. And five, um, opposite of five, sorry, negative five. Then we add two, so it's up to negative two. There it is, there's our coordinate rule. You're welcome to write it kind of in that new way or how I just wrote it right there. So here we go, nice job. You could just write x, y, you could do dash, arrow, or you could insert an image of an arrow. So we still get that opposite x, we still get that opposite y, but we're adjusting it. It's kind of weird, subtracting 2 on the x, right? Adding 2 on the y. It's kind of interesting, like, maybe thinking about what's going on there with that point. 180 degrees, kind of something going on here with doubling a little bit. Anyway, that's awesome if you can think that through. I think this should stay on the graph. We're now rotating from negative 3, 0. No, I changed that, right? That's why. That one point didn't end up on the graph. What's the next one? So oh, nice. Where's the uh, 0, negative 2. Aha, see, I knew I changed something. So we're now rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise about the point negative zero negative two zero negative two so it's on the y-axis and I want to know what's going on with the coordinates x y do you have the how's it going do you have these other ones so now we're gonna all you got to do is drag uh, we got to change this we're gonna drag it down did you get the coordinate rule, sis? Nice, yeah. Let's see what you can come up with for coordinate rule. Think about what the 90 degrees about the origin is. So here we go, we got 90 degrees, okay? I'm already rotating about this point. Look again what's going on. There's my 90 degrees about the origin. We're no, now going at from negative to zero. So there it is. Might be helpful to label those, you know, just so we see what's going on. That would be A prime. No, it wouldn't. That would be C prime. There, down here is A prime. Should have labeled that before. 90 degrees down here. And that would be B prime. There we go, that might be helpful. Clear off that writing. Greatest number at your table, check with your table mates. How, how are we doing with the coordinate rule? Do you remember what 90 degrees look like? How did it go with this? changes things a little bit. So we're going from zero, negative two, which would be on the y-axis. Yeah. I think I had that before and it got odd. It was hard to see, so I changed it. So a good place to start is what's the 90 degree rotation rule about the origin? X, Y goes to, Christian, you noticed what happened before? Nice. Opposite y, x. Yeah. So 
So that's kind of maybe our building block. Opposite y, x, because that a went from 0, 3 to negative 3, 0. Switch, and one of them goes negative. 4, 5 went to negative 5, 4. What's going on now? So let's look at a. One of the coordinates is 0. That might help. That might cover up some information, but I got 0, 3 goes to a prime way over here at negative 5, uh, negative 2. Kind of weird. What about b? That might be helpful. b goes from 4, 5 to b prime, negative 7, 2. Definitely like hard to see a pattern if you aren't first looking at this. Charlotte, you're you're thinking. Yes, I like that. Okay. What would I expect to happen from the origin? Just like Maggie noticed before, moving this around is just sliding it, right? So this is just like a rotation that we're used to, but then we're translating it. So I'd expect B prime to go to negative five positive 4, right? The x and y switch, and we're going to take on the opposite sign with the old y being the new x. So how do I adjust this to get from negative 5 to negative 7 and 4 to 2? Subtract 2. In both cases? Yeah. Nice. I think you had something similar to that, Ryan. Yeah, I just had them targeted because I misread it. Oh, because you had it a different yeah. location. Nice. That's really interesting to see that, too. Uh, so C ends up, let's just double check that this works, uh, from 3, negative 3. According to your rule, you're telling me I should go opposite, opposite Y is my new X, and then subtract 2. So I should go 3 minus 2 is 1. Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay, here you're saying to subtract 2 from the x to get my new y. 3 minus 2 is 1. Boom. 1, 1. Worked out. There it is. Nice job. Really nice job. Oh my gosh. Time. Time is the enemy. Who said that? I don't know. Uh, so what's going on here? x, y goes to, I think I said a, b. I forgot. Yeah. Use, use AB. I don't know. What do you like better, AB or XY? XY. Yeah, okay, change it to XY. So what happened? We, we still got that opposite Y in place of my new X. Then we subtract 2. And then we got X in place of my old Y. My old X, sorry, or my new Y, subtract 2. Kind of interesting what's going on there, I think. The point is 0, negative 2, and we're subtracting 2 from both the X and the Y. What do you think? Weird? Whew. You're doing great. So, you know, I think that's kind of interesting what we just saw, that really rotating from a point that's not the origin is really kind of like a combination, a, a composition of a rotation and a translation, if you will. Okay, getting tricky with it. Composition of transformations. Are you ready? You're already there. Moving right along, I know. You got this? Yes. Is this what yours says? <laughs> Did I change it? Yeah. You got R180, zero, uh, sorry, origin, R, X axis. Nice, that's what I have here. What am I doing first? So this is a reflection and a rotation. Does the order matter? Maybe. <laughs> it didn't before because we were translating a, along the y-axis. Okay, I don't know. I, I would guess it does matter. Which one are you doing first? The reflection, yep. 
if it helps, you could write, we're rotating 180 degrees about the origin of this reflection across the x-axis of triangle ice. A lot of writing to make make it make sense, but I think we got it. Yeah, we're reflecting first. So X. Oh, did I did I ask you to say what the composition is the same as? Totally forgot. Okay. Okay. Same distance from the x-axis. You got this. Like it's no problem at all, right? Rotating 100 degrees, not so bad either. We're just going to go opposite x, opposite y. So x prime is at negative <coughs> 4, and it's one away. We're going to rotate that 180 degrees. About the origin, boom, right there. Lands at 4, negative 1, right? Going quick, I know. Trying to cram it all in here in two minutes. So here's I double prime, X double prime. Let's see where E would end up. It's at negative 3, 3. It's going to end up at positive 3, negative 3. E double prime. That should be fine. There it is. What's this the same as? That's just the reflection over the Y axis. It's kind of weird, huh? It's... When you, end it, when you end it, it should look the same as a reflection over the white axis. So it's kind of weird. The, the 180 kind of undoes the uh, x-axis reflection in a sense, but also we're now reflecting over the y. Kind of weird stuff there. I'd like you to finish the, uh, the compositions. I think there's like two more of those. Does that sound reasonable? Check with your table before you leave. Greatest number. How are we doing? Did you see the coordinate rule? It's the same except we're subtracting two. If you move this up to the same actually looks really bad now we do. You are good to back up as needed. Nice job. Watch out for those compositions. Then you could write. Of course, if you want to copy this on a graph, piece of graph paper, insert an image in it by hand. That's another way to do it. I totally get doing it on the drawing is a little iffy. So, you know, do what you got to do. Make it work. Oh, God. Careful what you're doing, uh, which order you're doing things in, and uh, I do want to think what these are the same as, if you can come up with, if it's the same as one transformation. Really nice work. Have a good day. Yeah, we're going right to left. Yeah, the one, because we're going to translate this, we're re rotating this translation. Yeah, that's why I'm writing it with the parentheses, you know, might be helpful. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Rain. Nice work, Maggie. Appreciate it. It's a real-world application of the video games. Is it? Pretty sure. Are you video games or? Like, yeah, probably coding video with coding. It's going to, if you wanted to rotate a thing in a video game, I you know, you might need to say how that works out. Although there's probably 